Today I am going to talk about control groups in Linux. Control groups are called by their shorter name C groups. By using C groups, we can have fine grained control over allocating, prioritizing, denying, managing, and monitoring system resources. Hardware resources can be appropriately divided up among tasks and users, which increases the overall efficiency of a system. Control groups is a kernel feature and was added to the kernel in version 2.6 but enhanced with kern fs in 3.15 and 3.16. It's one of the vital ingredients required for creating a container in Linux. The C group mechanism comprises of two parts, the C group core and the controllers. The core is responsible for establishing and maintaining the hierarchy, and the controllers are attached to the hierarchies and responsible for distributing specific type of resources along the hierarchy. The controllers are also called subsystems. C groups hierarchies are realized by creating child C groups under the root C group. The C groups in the hierarchy are also called nodes. Each node in a C group hierarchy contains a set of processes, and their resource utilization is limited by the resources allocated to that node. Multiple independent hierarchies of C groups are obvious because each hierarchy is attached to one or more C group subsystems or controllers. A controller represents a single resource, such as CPU time, CPU set or memory. In this example, you can see multiple hierarchies, CPU C group hierarchy attached to the controllers, CPU and CPU ACCT, and memory C group is attached to the controller, memory. Here, hierarchy A contains CPU underscore CGRP as a root C group which contains two subgroups, CGRP1 and CGRP2. Similarly, hierarchy B contains memory underscore CGRP as a root C group which contains the two subgroups, CGRP3 and CGRP4. Processes in CGRP1 can use 60% of the CPU time and the process in the CGRP2 are limited to use only 20% of the CPU time. Each time a new hierarchy is created on the systems, all tasks on the system are initially members of the default C group of that hierarchy, which is nothing but the root C group. When a subgroup has been created and allocated with set of resources, process from one C group can be moved to other C group in the same hierarchy. Resource allocation to a node in a hierarchy cannot exceed resource allocation limits of its immediate parent. For example, any C group created under CGRP2 cannot be allocated with more than 20% of the CPU time. As already mentioned, the C group hierarchies are independent, for example, the trees for memory and CPU are different. Each process belongs to exactly one node in each hierarchy. Each hierarchy starts with a root node. CPU and memory are the root nodes in this example. Each node equals group of processes, sharing the same resources allocated to that node. For example, Bitcoins is a subgroup of Batch, which in turn is a subgroup of the root C group, CPU. Also, you can observe every process present in CPU C group hierarchy is present in the memory C group hierarchy. Which mean, for a process, CPU time allocation is controlled by CPU C group and memory allocation is controlled by memory C group. Most common C group subsystems are BLKIO, which sets limits on input or output access to and from block devices such as physical drives, disk, solid state, or USB. CPU, which uses the scheduler to provide CPU time slots to the tasks. CPU ACCT, which generates automatic reports on CPU resources used by tasks. CPU set, which assigns individual CPUs, on a multi-core system, and memory nodes to tasks. Devices which allows or denies access to devices by tasks. Freezer, which suspends or resumes tasks. Memory, which sets limits on memory use by tasks and generates automatic reports on memory resources used by those tasks. Net underscore CLS, which tags network packets with a class identifier that allows the Linux traffic controller to identify packets originating from a particular task. Net underscore prio, which provides a way to dynamically set the priority of network traffic per network interface. Huge TLB, which limits huge TLB size usage. Perf underscore event, which identifies C group membership of tasks and can be used for performance analysis. Any single controller, such as CPU, cannot be attached to more than one hierarchy if one of those hierarchies has a different controller attached to it already. Which means, as depicted, once the C group hierarchy, CPU underscore CG has been attached to the CPU controller, and CPU underscore MEM underscore CG has been attached to the memory controller, the CPU controller cannot be attached to the hierarchy CPU underscore MEM underscore CG. The numbered bullets represent a time sequence in which the subsystems are attached. 
For any single hierarchy you create, each task on the system can be a member of exactly one group in that hierarchy. A single task can be in multiple groups, as long as each of those groups is in a different hierarchy. As soon as a task becomes a member of a second group in the same hierarchy, it is removed from the first group in that hierarchy. Here, if HTTPD is a member of the node CG1 then it cannot be present in CG2 as both the nodes are in the same hierarchy. Otherwise, it creates ambiguity during resource allocation. Any process on the system which forks itself creates a child task. A child task automatically inherits the C group membership of its parent but can be moved to different C groups as needed. Once forked, the parent and child processes are completely independent. So far we discussed is the first version of the C groups, where we can create multiple hierarchies which may be attached to one or more controllers. Each hierarchy has its own virtual file system. In this example, we mounted CPU, CPU set, and memory controllers with a single hierarchy slash C group slash devices, and devices controller in a separate hierarchy, slash C group slash devices. LS subsys command shows us the C group controllers or subsystems available in the system, and their mounted hierarchy locations. Mounted hierarchies can be unmounted by U mount command. In C groups version 1, the ability to mount different controllers against different hierarchies was intended to allow great flexibility for application design. In practice, though, the flexibility turned out to be less useful than expected, and in many cases added complexity. Therefore, in C groups version 2, all available controllers are mounted against a single hierarchy. In contrast to C groups v1, v2 has single virtual file system because of single unified hierarchy. All the available controllers are automatically mounted when the file system is mounted, meaning that, it is not possible to specify the controllers when mounting the C group version 2 file system. By default, this unified file system is mounted under slash sys slash fs slash C group. Now let's see, how to run a process and restrict it to core 0 of the processor, and NUMA node 0. For example, the process we want to run, may just copy zeros to the null device. To achieve it, Let's create a new C group under CPU set hierarchy with the name CPU set A, assign the CPU core 0 and NUMA node 0 to it. Create the required process using DD command and execute by placing it in the C group CPU set A. Using the top command, we can verify if the process is using only CPU 0. Here, you can see, only CPU 0 is allocated to the process we created. Create C group can be deleted using the command, CG delete. C groups are managed using these commands. CG create, which creates a C group in a hierarchy. CG delete, which deletes a C group from a hierarchy. CG set, which sets resources to a C group. CG get, which gets resource information from a C group. CG exec, which executes a process by assigning a C group to it. CG classify, which move a process from one C group to other. System DCGLS which lists the C group's hierarchies. System DCG top, which shows resource usage of C groups which is similar to top command but shows the details at C group level. Hope that helped you. Thank you.